bearing with us guys, uh, technical difficulties. Let's just get right into it. Um, let's talk about knives today. Uh, there's so many questions and the world of knives is so vast that it's impossible to try to cover everything. So uh, yesterday I posted um, and wanted you guys to comment on what you want to know. And I'm just going to cover those. Sound good? Firstly, um, type of knives. Here are the knives that I feel like most people should have, all right? If you were to have one knife in the entire world, it is the chef's knife, okay? Uh, as you can see, the chef's knife uh, tapers as it comes to the point. Uh, and, and again, wider here, uh, thinner here. This is a, actually a ridiculously large 12 inch chef's knife. Most chef's knives are gonna be eight to 10 inches. Uh, and, and people are always like, how much do I need to spend? Uh, this would be my, my workhorse knife. This is a Forstner. Um, also known as a Victorinox, 40 to 50 bucks, depending where you, where you actually shop. And this knife, most professional chefs own. I've been using Fortuners for, for most of my career. So 40 bucks. Uh, this is a custom chef's knife. As you could tell, Houston <laughs> Edgeworks has made this knife for Ali. It is an eight inch chef's knife. Comes, he he's customs the sheets out for you, right there, uh, different metal, uh, same shape, same idea, well into the hundreds here, uh, well beyond the hundreds. Again, custom handmade knife. Uh, and, and here, Ali, you can check it out. I want you to put these two next to each other. Uh, same exact shape, my friends. They do the same thing. Um, like most chefs would tell you, I think invest in the time it takes to do the work. Uh, while we're down there, another knife I feel you absolutely need is a serrated knife. As you can see, there's little serrations or scallops over here. And uh, these, this knife is gonna be for bread, it's gonna be for tomatoes, which is a common question I'm getting right there. Everyone needs a serrated knife. Two price points for you. Again, with the Victorinox or the Forstner, which is this one with that kind of antimicrobial handle right there, probably like 20 to $40 here. And when we get into the shun knife, we're probably a buck, like a hundred to two hundred dollars. So again, two ranges, but two knives you absolutely need. Um, some some other knives I think that are very common. This is a uh, boning knife or fillet knife, right? The difference, in my opinion, between a boning and fillet, uh, it's a thin blade as you can see here. But the bow, the fillet knife for fish is flexible, and as you can see, it's it, it's necessary. We have to kind of get in and navigate between really tiny bones, okay? A bony knife would be the same shape, uh, just a little more rigid. Lastly, in the kind of common knives, a uh, paring knife. And um, so many of you out there are guilty for using this knife for everything. I see you, I, <laughs> I, I, know, I know you're like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, Stop looking at me. I know, Allie. Um, and again, if you notice, the one common thread between all three of these type, type of knives is I own a ton of Victorinox or Forsters because I think they are inexpensive and they are phenomenal workhorse knives. You don't need to go crazy, all right? Um, at last, I guess not last, there's so many kinds of knives. Uh, I like a, a slicing knife. Uh, I was Japanese trained and we use this uh, style knife uh, commonly for an all-purpose knife. Now that's a, a shun. And now I would use this for my all-purpose knife. Now that's a hundred to hundred fifty dollar knife. And then I had Houston Edgeworks build me one. And if you watch Tournament of Champions, this was the knife that Guy Fieri was like, "Bro, did you bring a sword to the match?" And yeah, I did bring a sword. So uh, this is probably well a thousand dollars or more. But again, it's not the tool. It's the mechanic, all right? So you fire away if you have any questions, but I don't want to kind of bog you down in knife selection. That was knife selection. If you're gonna add another one to the set, you need bone breaking knives. And we all know cleavers. This is a, my grandma's Chinese classic cleaver here. Very heavy, very thick spine. Super rigid knife. That's what a Chinese chef would use in an all purpose situation. Also as a bone breaker, I gotta cut uh, fish, I have to cut chickens, I have to do all that. A Japanese chef would use a deba. And again, you can see how thick that is. That is a bone breaking knife. Allie, go ahead. Do you like a single or double bevel? 
So good question. I brought out a single bevel knife for you guys. Now, let me answer that question uh, with, uh, with an explanation. Most knives in Western saw, European, American knives, the edge is like this. You have two edges that come to a point, and that's the dual or double bevel, right? Uh, there are Japanese knives like this knife. If you look, I see that's flat, and you see an edge on this side. This is a single bevel. I prefer a double bevel knife because um, in my 30 years of cooking, I use double bevels. They're more predictable for me, although I am sushi trained. Here's also another single bevel knife, which is a vegetable knife. So I'm a, I'm a double bevel guy, um, but you basically, tr you fight as you train, and I've trained more with the double bevel. Good questions, Allie. Um, let, me, let me move all this crazy amount of knives over and tell you some things you absolutely must have. You have to have a steel. You don't need to sharpen your knives every day. You do need to steal your knives, meaning all stealing does, and we'll do a separate video on stealing, but you're just trying to grab the bevel and use the steel to line up that bevel. What's happening is, if you put an edge under a microscope, it doesn't look like this. It doesn't come to a perfect point. Um, the fine little hairs that make the edge are kind of like that, they're kind of like that, they're not aligned. So by stealing the knife, you are lining up those feathers to create a really uh, a fine edge. That's all it is. Now, do you have a question over there? You have a bride-to-be that wants to know a good knife set Congratulations, by the way. Um, I am not a fan of sets, but if you are a symmetrical person and a matchy match person, <coughs> like I married, <coughs> I married one of those. Um, I want you all to pick, go to the store, and I want, and like a Sir La Table, a William Sonoma, and I want you to pull like the standard, the Shun, the Global, um, pull out even the Forstner. Whatever's in your price range, the first way you pick a knife is by how it feels in your hand. And let's talk about grip. Nice segue. Uh, you can see the delineation between the handle and the blade. Everybody out there, okay. They give me the okay symbol, all right? It's the circle game. We've all played the circle game. Um, the way we grip a knife out, you can come as tight as you can on this knife right here. The way we uh, actually grip a knife, friends, is you make the okay, and you're gonna take the thumb and the index finger of the okay and pinch the blade that's close to the handle. Now we wrap the three fingers around the handle uh, to enclose the knife, and we've made a proper grip. So it's called the pinch grip. And if you notice, now the knife is a linear extension of my arm, which gives me maximum control and maximum leverage. All right, so that's your grip. So you go to the store and you're like, okay, I feel a shun. I feel the three different shuns. Oh, I feel, when I grip correctly, the global, um, and pick all the brands, the knife that most fits your hand, that feels right, is gonna be the knife you're gonna use the most. So I want you to go to the store, pick that, and you don't need any more knives than what we talked about. The chefs, the serrated, maybe um, the fillet knife and a paring knife, and you're done. That's gonna be 99% of the job. In fact, most chefs can do everything with one knife, and for me, it's the chef's knife. All right, uh, all right, I'm gonna get into it. Allie, you got a question. I'm sorry, Facebook side, if you're blurry. It's not me. It's uh, not me. It might it's, be the connection. It might be the connection. It might be the connection. Stop so. yelling at me. Oh. Just kidding. Just right. kidding. I'm trying to run two rigs here, people. I know. She's trying to do it all. Okay, let's do this. Um, you know the grip. You know the knife. You know the selection. Uh, I want you to automatically uh, start to program yourself. I pick up a knife ready to cut. I'm going to grab my steel immediately and steal it three to four times on each side. That's it. Just line up those feathers, okay? Always have a towel close by. This is how I like to wipe my knife down. You, it's clamshell. So use the clamshell to uh, hold the knife spine back, and that's how you're prepared. In case you get microscopic shaving, you can also do it on the board and just lay the knife down. 
blade away from you. Okay, let's get into some cutting, shall we? Um, onion. There we go. You can get tight now if you want, Alex. I'm so accustomed to using um, a thin knife as my all-purpose knife. That's what I do. So three ways to cut onions. No matter what, we start onions the same way. We take away the tip end. And this is the controversial one right here. We take away the root end. And so many home chefs and non-like production chefs go, but you need that to hold on to, <laughs> or you don't get a handle. Is that how they say it? Just yeah, that's like that. how they say it when they complain and they cry about how I cut. Hogwash. <laughs> you try to cut 100 pounds of onions, no production chef that cuts hundreds of pounds of onions does it that way. We all do it this way. Because we have a clean end to sit up straight, we have a clean bottom, and check it out. Root to top, north pole to south pole, that's how you make your cut, you just watch that video. And if I'm doing 20 onions, I do the exact same thing. Tip, 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 all 20. And then I cut in half all 20 and then I peel. You do the same motion every time. You don't try to uh, do, since it's a three step process, you don't try to do all three steps on each onion. You do the same step through the whole batch and then you come back and you, and you deal with it that way. So that's how I, I dispatch onions. Um, let's start. Uh, with the, uh, the the slice. Now, always know where your root side is. It's that really tight bunch. That's where the root was, where you didn't want me to cut. And the other side is the rainbow. Always keep the root side to your weak hand side. See that root side? You always want to keep that to your weak hand. Since I'm right-handed, it's going to live on my left side. Now, you know the pinch grip already. You got to learn the um, the guide hand. And I want you to imagine every piece of the piece of your, you're cutting like a mouse. We all use mice. Okay. <laughs> um, like a computer mouse, you're going to lead with your index finger. You're going to keep your, uh, your, your four fingers that you're not leading with behind. And then you're going to hold anchor and use that mouse finger to guide your knife. Just like that. Two cardinal rules. I need to get serious with you for a second. Two rules. You never disobey. All your fingers are always curled under, and I'll show you. And the second rule is you never protrude the thumb past your index finger. Here, come tight and I'll show you what I mean. The, the mouse click lives like that. Number one rule, always keep that fingertip curled under, right? Second rule is you never like get to the end of the onion and go, oh, let me poke my thumb out and go wham and cut my thumb off. <laughs> Because I've done that before. So here we go. Uh, with a tight shot, I'm gonna, you're going to see what's happening. Maybe I'll reverse. We'll, we'll play reverse together. All right? So uh, guiding. And now I'm slicing as I guide. Slicing as I guide. Slicing as I guide. That's a slice. And it's up to you how thin you want your slices. Do you want an eighth, quarter, etc.? But notice the knife is living with that curled under finger. Just like that. So there it is. Now I'm gonna change my angle so you can see how fast you can do this. Now your, 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 your power hand, dominant hand, is always starting tip on the board uh, and your heel is up and it's like a choo-choo train piston. You're gonna go down, forward, up, back. Down, forward, up, back. Boom. Chooka, 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 chooka. And here comes the un, yeah. Chicka, 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 chicka. See what I mean? It literally looks like a, a piston. And now if you want to get, oh, go to this side, maybe I can crawl. What's the best angle? Oh let's do it this way. Let's do it that way. So there it's going to go chicka, chicka. All right. Chicka, 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 chicka. Guide finger. Never put your fingertips under. Never roll your thumb under the fingertips. And then you start doing this and you start getting faster and I measure my fingers and I don't have to worry. So there it is, slices. You guys, are you guys still awake out there? So first- You gotta be bored. First, say hi to Sari Faye. What up, Sari Faye? How are you? And also, Danielle wants you to settle an argument. Danielle. In her house, yes. do knives go in the dishwasher? This is an argument <laughs> in our house. Okay, the official rule is, Knives should never go into the dishwasher, especially if you spend a lot of money. I'm sorry, what? But what do you say? I have. Did you say I should not go in the dishwasher? They really shouldn't. I've been guilty of it, so yes. So there it is. I'm sorry. 
All right, let's do the let's do the dice. The slice is really simple. You saw the slice. Now I'm gonna have you come in really tight. Now the slice, you see the rainbow? That means it's the top side. I'm gonna go quarter inch, quarter inch. All right, if I can get another quarter inch, and then I'm gonna turn the knife in and go quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch. But I'm not going to go through the onion. So Ali, why don't you do a first few slices uh, the way you're you're licking? So I'm gonna go quarter inch, swiping. And now I want you to come over the top and see how I do it. So remember that quarter inch slice? I'm not going to go through the onion. I'm going to get as close to the root as possible. Just like that. So it's still connected. And now I'm going to go in quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch. All the while leaving that onion connected by about by a little, by a little nub there. And now watch. Now you just finish with your quarter inch slice and boom. So in three motions... You've diced an onion. Are you guys bored yet? I'm sorry if, if this is like monotonous. And then when I get they're down to this no, end, thank you. When I get down to the end, I can do the quarter inch and then there you go. All right, we've done onions. And to do more onions, just go to that IGTV video. Let's do stuff you haven't done before. Do you want to talk about the cutting boards? Because some people are asking. Yo, this is one, this is a six foot long cutting board um, from a fallen live edge it's a live edge slab tree from a fallen tree one of a kind live edge slabs we'll put a link after this but um but there are friends they they make these in long island and uh this is my favorite board ever so that's that's it. one of a kind live edge slabs i'll post a link later okay any other questions before we go to carrot another if you're like nobody out, bored nobody bored okay nobody bored uh, i had a question i am so scared I am clumsy AF. I've got all these comments, what do I do? <laughs> if you're kind of in that beginnering phase, I want you to pick up a Kevlar cut glove, right? There, there's, there's, there's no shame in, in, in being safe. In fact, most big corporations that make you wear one of these and then a glove over, dude, this is real, right? This life is razor sharp, as you can see. So if you can work with the glove, and then not be worried. Does that make sense? So um, wear a Kevlar cut glove, all right? They're $5, all right? It, it costs you more in time and blood going having to kill time to go get a stitch. So Kevlar cut glove. Any of questions, ask Allie about the cut glove. And guess what, they come in, they come in Grammy sizes too. They come in kid size. This is a Maya's cut glove. So get them for your kids, all right? No one's bored. You guys are still okay. Let's keep going then. Won't take up too much of your time. Carrot. Um, two things I want to show you on carrots and we're done. Another question I got a lot. Jed, I'm so scared. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> hey, Jed. I am so scared to do julienne and fine dice on a carrot. Now, let me show you an easy way, all right? Let me show you the French traditional way. Anything long, usually cut into uh, manageable pieces. So here, Ali, come on in. Anything that's wider than my palm, I li I'd like you to cut into palm width pieces. Once This is the traditional French way to do it, by the way. Oh, you should show them how you cut your and tomatoes. Then, oh, yeah, I'll tomatoes. do that. And then what I want you to do is, uh, in culinary school, they made us square off these pieces. This is horrific. And it's very wasteful for the home chef. It doesn't make sense, because in the French kitchen, we could make chicken stock, or we save those for trim. But you can't do that in the house, right? So if I wanted to make a julienne, I would take an eighth inch slice like that. If I wanted to make a small dice, I would take a quarter inch slice like that. So remember this Jet Tila rhyme. A tile becomes a slice, a slice becomes a dice. Remember that, a tile becomes a slice, a slice becomes a dice. This is what I mean. I took a tile, eighth inch tile, now watch. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do eighth inch slices. Guess what I've just made? Starts with a J, ends with a Julian. Julian, okay? So now I've made tile to the slice. Watch this. The slice becomes a dice. I've made from Julian into Brunoise. I just like saying it. Brunoise, all right? So again, you're like, oh, that makes sense. Julian, Brunoise. Okay, so I have a quarter inch tile. Now let's make a quarter inch slice. Oh, that's easy. That's a batonet or a matched, I mean, a, a carrot, like a crudite. And now a slice becomes a what, guys? 
Now you're like getting fancy. Now you're bunching them together and you're getting all confident and stuff and you're feeling good about your knife cuts and you're loving it. So there it is. So if I wanted to do a larger dice, it's three quarters. So it's tile, slice, dice. All right, now you're like, that sucks because it's super wasteful. How do I do this in real life, non-French kitchen? This is how you do it. Take that cylinder. Now we're learning a new cut. Bias slice, bias slice. Now watch what I do. Instead of these kinds of coins, don't cut those coins. I want you to take a massive angle on this. Watch what I mean by massive angle. See that angle? I want you to do one eighth inch coins to one quarter inch these coins. Now, if I take these coins and I line them up on top of each other, right? Now I smash them up, I do the mouse click, follow the two rules. This is how a home chef can achieve julienne without having to square off and get all ridiculous. Just like that, see how easy that is? It's so simple. I'm saving these for soup. It's quarantine, I need all this stuff. So I'm gonna take a break for questions. Tile slice dice. Anything, nothing, no one's bored. I can't believe it. I'd be bored of me. Okay, um, one more veggie and I'm kind of done. Actually. Some people have been asking for a link to the cut gloves. Oh, for sure. I'll give you links to cut gloves um, and everything after the video. Okay, um, celery. Uh, now you guys understand tile slice dice, slice, slice, you can kind of do anything here. So I'll just show you a uh, fast way to do celery really quick. Come on in, Allie. Um, so everything wider than my palm, what do I do with it? Make it manageable, okay? So uh, again, tile, slice. These are good for a crudite. Send them off to kids' lunches. Don't be paying the grocery stores a thousand percent markup. And then if I wanted to dice them at this point, then dice. So it gets pretty easy, y'all. All right, I know I'm not gonna cover everything, but I'm gonna cover a lot. Uh, okay, that, that's it. I'm gonna maybe one more thing, peeling ginger, all right? Uh, actually, Ali, we're five for questions. I'm gonna grab a tomato. Really, really Lisa in Louisiana is asking, how do you store your knives? There you go. Store. And another question that people have been asking yeah. is how you wash the cutting board. Uh, washing cutting boards, right here. That's actually before the quarantine. I've always taken a quart of water with a teaspoon to tablespoon of bleach. And then I'll say it there, one tablespoon of bleach. And then boom, boom, boom. Because you'd think you take a 50 pound cutting board to the sink, not gonna happen, <laughs> not gonna happen. So. And then mineral oil um, every every few weeks. That's how I like to do it. I store my knives in a drawer. Uh, if you're really precious and you have expensive knives, put guards on the edges. That's all you gotta do right there. No one's bored yet? What's wrong with you guys? How do you store your knives? Uh, again. How do you uh, store your knives, Jet Tila? We have a giant drawer and I line it with cork or that really cushiony contact paper. That's how I like to store my knives. Try not to slam them all together like I do it. Uh, and if you're really precious, put, use a magnet. Before we were married, when I was single, I had a big old magnet, and now we don't, who got time for that? I ain't got well, time We have that. too many knives. <laughs> yeah, we have like a hundred knives. Um, okay, two things I wanna show you, um, then we'll open it up. Soft items. Actually, you have a question first. What do you think of ceramic knives? What do I think about ceramic knives? I think ceramic knives are bloody sharp. I think they're great because they're sharp. They suck because they're brittle. Right? They're not gonna give you the rigidity of a real knife. You take a ceramic knife and you're like, oh, I'm gonna do this. And you're like, oh snap, I just chipped my $100 knife. Not a huge fan of ceramic knives, that's just me. They're crazy sharp though. If you're cutting something that will never hurt your knife, who cares? All right, soft tomato time. This is why you need one of these. And you're like, how do I hone this knife, Jet? Well, this is a single edge knife. That means there's the scallops are on the back, but they're flat. There's no edge on them. There's only edge here. So take your um, honing steel, and then you can literally hone the scallops in between. And that's how I do it. And then I do one flat on the back, and then I do my, my super wipe. All right, tomatoes. Don't use, flat, don't use your regular knives on tomatoes because I know you haven't sharpened them in a year. And let, I let the pro sharpen. Our chef, Tad, he sharpens all my knives. I'm really good with a knife. I am terrible sharpening. So let the, let the serrated, see the teeth? Let the teeth work for you, okay? Don't try to be all like smashy smash. That's what these teeth exist for, okay? 
So soft items, that's tomatoes, that's mangoes, that's the whole deal right there. All right. Um, gosh, I think I'm running out of things to talk about. Okay. Do you have any bell peppers to Do I have any cut? bell peppers? I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't. I don't think we do. Yeah, well, we'll come back with part two if you're really enjoying this. Um, here, this is what I want you to do for your teenagers and your kids. Xylus, this is called the Xylus salad knife. And if you notice, it's not going to cut me. I mean, it'll scratch me, but it won't cut me. This is what Amaya is training on. And we'll post a video of her cutting. Check out how still sharp this thing is. With the same grip, all right, pinch grip, a little bit of pressure, boom. And now I can, I can dice. It's not gonna give you a clean edge, but guess what? It's gonna be the best knife for your kids to use without cutting themselves. It gives them the true blade contact feel and the right motion uh, which builds confidence and builds technique without worrying about them cutting their fingers. Because if they do go wham, oh no, I'm okay. This will uh, give you an abrasion, but it won't give you a bad cut. So I like these. Let's give some of these away. All right, if you wanna win one of these, um, just DM me and um, send me a photo of you cooking with your kid. First five people on Instagram that DM me with a photo of their kid, um, and then first five people on Facebook that DM me for, you, for your kids cooking, uh, I'm gonna pick, select you guys, and then uh, we're gonna get your info, we're gonna send you knives. Our friends at Xylus gave us a ton of knives just to give you, by the way. So five and five, and we'll save some for later, all right? Um, you guys aren't bored yet? What is wrong with you? You have ginger? Ginger, my final party trick, and then we gotta go. Uh, all right, so this is how I like to play with ginger. Now you're like, this is just in my way. This is how my grandma taught me. So ginger, you peel the fingers, and you, you right, you kind of snap the fingers off. And uh, I save the really tiny ones for um, smoothies in the morning. And then you square off one side. I square, I save that for um, smoothies in the morning. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, I want you to leave the edge of so the fancy. knife on the board and just use it as a lever. While you're watching the lever, it's like Pac-Man. And then with just a little bit of pressure, and you, by rotating the ginger, the skin pulls right off. You don't have to peel ginger, by the way. Um, if you're grating ginger, like I'm making tikka masala as a, on a, as a video for you guys right now. I'm using oh, Artie Sequera's video, her recipe, sorry. And then um, I'm gonna use her. So, and I'm gonna make it, and what I do that, I just grate the ginger skin and everything. And then you guys understand tile slice dice, so I don't need to, I don't need to show you, but again, uh, save that. Tile, slice, and then dice. Okay, uh, if you notice, Ann Burrell gets so mad at me because I do this. <laughs> I was trained in the Asian kitchen, and sometimes I need a lot of leverage to get in and make these cuts, so I do that. Sue me. I don't know what to tell you. That's just the way I cut. So there it is. Allie. Can you also use a spoon to do that with ginger to peel it? Yeah, you totally can. But why use two things when you're going to use the one knife anyway later? So I get that. I hear that. But if I don't want to switch gears, make more dishes. I'm going to peel, 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 cut, cut, cut. I'm not going to be like, clean the spoon, come back. Because I think it just makes too much work. All right, Can guys. we get one more close-up of the serrated? Yeah, yeah, of course, guys. One more close-up of the was serrated. Asking. I'll give you two, two. These are also known as bread knives, and I hate calling them that because they're, they're for more than just bread. So this is a shun. This is a $100, $150 knife right there. Um, this is the Victorinox, the Forstner, which is about a $20 to $40 knife right there. Both phenomenal knives. I love my Victorinox. Again, I got I have these because they gave them to me. So and a close up of again, the xylus. A xylus bread knife. This is in the packaging right there. We're gonna give a few away. They're super inexpensive, guys. And we're gonna show you Amaya using that to cut. So so that's it. Wow, 30 dude, I've been doing this for a while now. It's been <laughs> are you not are you not entertained? Ah. Anyway, guys, um, please, I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys are doing well during the quarantine. 
Uh, we're going to keep making content. Twice a week we're going to do live videos and I'm going to do at least one to two edited videos, gear reviews, um, just fun stuff. I'm going to do banana bread and tikka masala probably uh, next week. And then uh, I'll do Penang curry, maybe sticky rice and mangoes next week too. So guys, we're here. We love you guys. Ali Teela is also continuing to do really fun things like cocktails. She's going to do uh, how to stimulate and teach your kindergartners and preschoolers. So the Teelas are here to serve you. We appreciate your time. Um, have a great weekend. And please practice, practice one random act of kindness every single day. And we're going to get out of this uh, into a better world. See you later, guys. Bye-bye. What?